Hello, and welcome to episode 45 of the Extreme Hardware Podcast. Uh, we are joined with our normal crew of folks here, starting out with Mr. Axifer. Hello, hello. Oh, Chris, you actually didn't interrupt me this time. I'm impressed. Yeah, I was eating graham crackers. And we've also got Natjack. Hey, my favorite game is Halo. My name is John Halo. Oh my gosh. Hi, John. <laughs> Hi, John. And Hi. this is Simmons. Uh, yeah. So I want to just get this uh, episode rolling a little bit spicy today because our friend Axifer here, he needs to call out a former podcast guest immediately. Oh and I just want to I just want to get him angry right off the get go. So you take it away, my friend. Pourquoi? Pourquoi tu fais ça? <laughs> Hey, oh, shut up, okay. Frenchie. We only speak the language of winners on this podcast. <laughs> Let me go pull up the tweet quickly. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm uh, drinking Nabathan Creek, which is... Well, now that I want it, of course, it's way down my list. Oh, there we go. So, I don't even know the guy's name, but whoever, the guy who does bite my bits, he was asking Wendell from Level 1 Text for advice on rack-mounted UPSs and hooking up additional battery cells to increase the capacity. Um, so, actually, Axifer, it's either a battery or a cell. It's not a battery cell. Hey, gosh. It could be either. <laughs> you don't know what's internally. Yeah, damn, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Get <it> anyway, <laughs> so Bite My Bits want to basically just extend by the hooking up just some extra batteries externally to the UPS. In this case, it was a cyber power one. Every UPS is different in how it uses the cells. Some of them actually just look at a series chain of a bunch of cells. Some use multiple parallel links of a certain amount of cells with extra monitoring. Depends oh, on the like, brand. Uh, yeah, different, thing. Like yeah what some a, will what monitor each, yeah. each 12 volt separately for charging purposes, or some will just run off 12 volts. Some will run off up to 72 volts, like mine. Most run at around 48 volts if there's four cells in series. So it's not a cut and dry answer of how you hook them up. And and especially when someone's they're lead acid, so they aren't dry. I'm sorry. Well, yeah. I mean, that when someone's tweeting with basically pictures done in MS Paint of how to hook up these battery cells in parallel and series, mm. asking for advice, and Wendell comes in and is kind of giving some short answers of like, yeah, use fuse protection and stuff like this. You're basically empowering someone who doesn't know what they're doing to have just enough knowledge to hurt themselves and potentially their equipment, which I kind of don't support. I like DIY and all, but not so, when it involves high voltage and charging and high current from batteries that you can short out. And so you know, just clear, you're more so gas. concerned about the equipment rather than the individual. Is that what I'm getting from this? Yeah. Yes. And <laughs> Yeah, I, I've kind of uh, considered making like a um, just an excessively large UPS, by which I mean, like the capacity is going to be no more than about like a kilowatt. Like I, I don't need that much, but I want the runtime to be extremely long. And I've thought about it, and then I looked into it and realized, okay, so I can use car batteries for this. Oh, they vent hydrogen. That can be a problem. So, <laughs> yeah, you can you can get sealed ones or like the AGM. Oh well, yeah, I like mean glass se mount sealed lead. And... Sealed lead acid is the UPS, you know, lead acid battery anyway. Just because you can like turn them upside down and sulfuric acid doesn't dump onto the floor. But uh Yeah, like I fully support DIY solutions if you have the knowledge and the skills. But if you don't have electrical knowledge and electronics and you know how charging curves work and you have an oscilloscope, you can actually measure it out. I highly advise against getting into this unless you're buying off the shelf parts that mate together. Like when you're building a big 18650 lithium mm. DIY power walls, you can buy packs of the cells or packs of chargers that interface and do all the safety features for you. So you just basically have to get a bunch of old laptop batteries take the cells out test them all individually and hook them up yeah annoyingly best buy has signs that say property of best buy on all of their recycling bins so it would be illegal to get your batteries that way <laughs> don't think any of us suggested that but 
Yes. I, I like how that's where your mind went, Chris. What? <laughs> it's free. It's free real estate, Simmons. It's free real estate. You, you know what? The cheapest way to build a battery is just to go it's steal crimes. <laughs> no, the cheapest I mean, way would be to offer service in your city to collect old laptop batteries to bring to recycling centers and give oh people God. like a two dollar fee or something. Dude, that's a great idea. All you would need is like an old white truck or van with some uh, with some stickers on it and a one eight hundred number. Doesn't have to go anywhere. It's just a one eight hundred number. Um, just like go in with a hard hat and a high vis vest. Hello, I'm here for your batteries. Like, okay, well, I didn't think pickup was today, but here you go. And there you go. Powerball yeah. done. See, now I just have this great vision of Chris driving around a v- yeah, white same. van instead of free candy. Up, up. No, no, yeah, if, it's, if free Chris was doing it, <laughs> it wouldn't be a van. Oh, He'd yeah, yeah. And get a cool. bunch of white 3D, uh, white 3M vinyl and vinyl wrap a PT cruiser. Okay. <laughs> first of install all. a hitch on it and get a utility trailer and he'd drive that around. <laughs> okay. A utility trailer that looks like a PT cruiser. <laughs> exactly. It's just based in the back half of a PT just cruiser. A PT cruiser that doesn't run anymore that's been stripped. Um, oh, I love this idea. <laughs> no, shut up. First of all, I wouldn't drive a good car like a PT cruiser as my work vehicle. I would use a bad car like a Chevrolet HHR. Kid, you want something at least reliable that's gonna last more than a week. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's why I, that's why I want the uh, PT Cruiser for my daily, and why I've accepted that the HHR. Oh, so bad. you want to tow around an empty Chevy HHR as the trailer? No, that's illegal. <laughs> oh, by the way, Simmons, did you see my double decker PT Cruiser thread? Uh, yes, I did, and uh, that that made me really happy and also really angry at the exact same time. Yeah, it made Bob <laughs> that upset, and honestly, that's what I was shooting for after the first reaction image. <laughs> Oh boy. All right. So moving on to an actual tech related article because we're supposed to talk about those. So uh, y- you're pretty much getting sick and tired of hearing about AMD's new uh, Zen 3 supports the, uh, what is it? The uh, system access memory or whatever. Smart access memory. Smart access memory. Um, and then Intel came back and said, well, we're going to offer it too. So yeah, about that, as Rock. As all has currently implemented clever access memory, as they're calling it, on Intel Z490 Taishi motherboards, and MSI has added a resizable bar feature to its Intel 400 series motherboards. It looks like the majority of them for MSI. Um, and then, as a counter, uh, AMD Ryzen 3000 series and older Zen uh, CPUs will not support SAM due to hardware limitations. Mm-hmm. But Haswell supports it, so Intel is a, has free market there. Okay, so wait, hang on. Zen What's two. not supporting it, but Haswell will? Uh, no, no, Zen two. Haswell. Oh, okay. All, yeah, the, yeah. all the all way back to Haswell and all the way back to Zen two. Technically, CPU support the feature. Right. It's just the motherboards have to have the BIOS or UEFI that supports it, and the UEFI portion, because you know the whole secure memory security issue means a lot of extra BIOS work, which MSI, I think, yeah. they're trying to win back a lot of their market after a lot of their recent really bad PR decisions with techs that with support. Because they've been over promising a lot of BIOS features on both the AMD and Intel side. Ooh. So I think they're just putting more work into it to try to get some people back. Guys, okay, so check out this screenshot here from uh, the Tech Power Up article. Look! Look at that! Uh, that first CPU Z, uh, CPU Z screenshot. Tell me, yeah, Rocket what Lake. code name is that? Rocky Lake. Rocket Lake. Yeah, Rocket yeah, it's Lake. Rocket Lake. Uh, so MSI has leaked that Rocket Lake will be. It will have two megabytes of L3 cache per core. Mm-hmm. Um, how how much L3 did Sunny Cove had? Did they redo the cache for Sunny Cove, or was that only with a uh, Willow? Uh, let me check. I don't know. Well, that's the big thing about this leak, though, is that it supports the AVX 512F feature set as well. Uh, I guess probably. On, on a non-HD part. 
Okay, what what does Intel say on Arc? How much cash oh. does uh, does this thing have? Eight megs oh. for four cores. Oh, okay. For so, uh, Sunny Cove supports two megs per core. Yeah. Okay. That's boring then. So, yeah, all right. <laughs> so you got to. Uh, no, it, it's not that, but it's just that's information, which means we know that they didn't uh, mess around with that. Um, that's just that is extremely funny. Yeah. It's also funny if you look at just the screenshot alone, which some people like to do. If this was a certain site that just looks at the data in front of them and nothing else, you're allowed to say hex is in WCCF. It's okay. I'll send it to OCN, but oh, hey, <laughs> <got him. laughs> the Intel part looks horrendously inefficient compared to the AMD part. The AMD part is running at only 0 0.368 volts, mm -hmm. while the Intel part has to push 1.15 volts. <laughs> Um, I That's have horrible this, efficiency. I have the strangest <laughs> feeling that AMD cannot run below 0.4 volts at three gigahertz. I don't think transistors are able to do that yet. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, it's definitely some weird power reporting. Well, voltage reporting issues on Ryzen and CPU-Z, which is to be expected. I don't think anyone uses oh, CPU-Z to monitor their and core voltage. Oh, they do. I do. Well, actually, no, I don't. I use CPU-Z. I use HW Monitor or HW Info or other board provided tools or the BIOS. Here, yeah, let's get a voltage. Yeah, voltage twelve point six volts nominal for for six lead acid cells in series. Attached yeah, I think this whole devices. Sam versus Cam versus. Scam versus, versus damn. Com. They should have called it clever. What What did this person say? Clever, clever unified com. memory. That's probably it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I mean, you look at it, it's got the, all these different names. It's, mm -hmm. you could argue it's the same as SMT versus hyperthreading. Mm -hmm. oh, it's all okay. arguably the same level of feature set. It's just, they're calling it different things, but it basically does the same thing from the consumer's point of view. It's just marketing it as sl some slightly different term, but it does the same thing. Yeah, what are you owing it? it? Or like FreeSync the... versus G-Sync oh, versus right. VRR. Mm -hmm. Well, G-Sync is its own thing, because if I remember correctly, that started out with like proprietary modules. Isn't G-Sync at started. this point? Isn't it at this point, though, just like uh, adaptive yeah. sync, and but NVIDIA branded? So yeah. now they've got and the multiple certified. levels. Where the I think the G Sync oh, okay. certified yeah. or capable is basically it supports FreeSync because now NVIDIA cards will just run at actual FreeSync monitors, even if they don't officially support VRR, which not many do, but there are a handful that were just weird. Some of those Korean overclocking monitors didn't fully support the VESA spec, but they supported FreeSync somehow. Just weird choices. Just like that Xbox yeah. One SOC that Chris has in his basement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a piece of shit. I was going to benchmark mm -hmm. it more. Uh, I don't think the drivers work on Windows 7. I think that's been my issues because people have been saying, oh, it's fine. There's no stability problem. Oh, no, you win need Windows 8, not 8.1, Windows 8. Uh, that's cursed. Well, it works on Windows 10 because a bunch of people. So is the like, Xbox interface. Hey, shut up, Axie. I'm getting someplace. Anyway, people have had like no issues and have actually gotten results out of it with Windows 10. Why not? But like I just can't be bothered to install. to install it. Uh, Why not? It's like probably the easiest thing to install. Well, it's the fact that it takes time and effort, and I I do not believe that it is worth it because we we know how it behaves. Uh, Jack, I've actually got the uh, the write up for that package up, and I should send that to you. But I, I you probably I don't, install Windows 10 in the whatever. duration of a podcast. Yeah. Yes, or I could just scroll through Twitter and, like, I'm not going to finish that sentence. That's rather vulgar for this podcast. But, but uh, I'm using Twitter right now. How can you be using Twitter if I am? Oh, that damn, doesn't make right. sense. It's only one website. Mm -hmm. That is how the internet works. Mm -hmm. Imagine it did, though. If you had to book <laughs> time to use a website. I mean, you used to with... Uh, Dial up. 
well, BBSs and stuff, but I mean, you see multiple people could still connect, just limited connections, and you might not see all the updates until everyone's updated their side, but... Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't like that. Somebody made an M&M cookie in the shape of a hand. I'm I'm just gonna copy this in here and then also send the tweet. I I, I do not like this. Well, I do for not audio like this listeners, once you post the tweet, you're gonna have to say out the full tweet and the full tweet number at the end of it so they can go view it <laughs> after this. Uh, okay, if you say so. I had a dream where there was a food called King's Hand, a hollow hand made of M&M cookie filled with Greek salad. I could not stop thinking about it. Here is the culmination of a week-long effort from hypertext transfer protocol secure colon slash slash twitter dot com slash that fruit slash status slash one three three five six eight nine nine five one six four zero four nine four zero eight zero. I hate this so much. <laughs> I am you, simply Chris. doing as requested. Our oh, audio viewers, Teddy? I love Teddy. We'll appreciate it. He oh, oved no, in, in the raw E and nice. oved out the eat the hot cookie. Okay. Nice. So <laughs> if you put raw E's in the <laughs> oven and then cookies come out of the oven, at what point does a raw E become a cookie? <laughs> when you get it in the oven out. <laughs> when, the, when the internal yeah. temperature reaches 143 degrees Fahrenheit. God, no, yes. Axie, that's going to leave so many tapeworms in the raw E. <laughs> you don't understand how baking works. You don't understand our units or our ways. Get out of here, you goddamn <laughs> foreigner. Okay, I'll, I'll go back to my free health care. Unsure, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, God. All right. I, I, need yeah. to, I need to change topics before this deal goes any further. Yeah. That's okay. I'm being I love, racist I love you, Chris. Quebec. I'm being racist towards Quebec. It's okay. Okay. So, anyway, um, so we've got two articles that we're back to backing here. Uh, so this first yeah, one butt to butt. comes from PC Gamer, uh, great we- website. But uh, allegedly, the 3060 Ti is supposed to be in stock and in higher quantities. And then this follow-up article, uh, which is by uh, Axie, the link is broken. What link? <laughs> Axie, you dumb nerd. Null HTTP <laughs> colon slash slash uh, null HTTP colon slash slash L L <laughs> <laughs> my favorite website. <laughs> what do you think that was? Actually, what, what did out. you do? What do you think that was? <laughs> See if you <laughs> find out. It was probably an LTT. Uh, okay, no, it's technically oh, it was for okay, so, so the follow up yeah, <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All right. The follow-up article is uh, RTX 30 series shortages partially caused by insufficient wafer substrate and component supply. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so this is a thing. Uh, apparently, COVID has made uh, 8-inch wafer produ- uh, production like a lot more expensive. Uh, there are probably going to be sort- shortages and price increases yeah. on basically Everything. every semiconductor. Uh, yeah. So that's cool because that means stuff like MOSFETs, uh, some basic ICs, like that kind of thing. Uh, 2021 is going to suck, and I really don't want to build a PC at these prices, but I'm afraid that I'm going to have to if I like want a PC. Actually, Stop. didn't. Stop. Speaking Stop. Of that, didn't Bonking they, Teddy. Didn't Do Micron have an oh, hour of downtime or something this week? And DRAM yeah. prices immediately skyrocketed, which kind of ties into that. I just remember actually yeah, watching. That, that always happens. It's it's just it was like a one hour power outage. Uh, so like these wafers take, they take a good like twelve to twenty weeks, depending on the part, uh, to actually get through production lines. And yeah. there's like a really sensitive part where if there's like an issue, yeah, then that's the, the whole frenulum. wafer is just dead. And yeah, that's the frenulum. <laughs> see i think what baffles me the most about uh, that is like an hour power outage for something that specific yeah. they are a huge company that can afford these big massive clean white facilities how do they not have massive double and double conversion battery backups running for all this stuff 
I well, mean, it, it's did, probably but... stuff like the batteries could die, or the <laughs> failover didn't work properly, or something. I don't. Well, I, you test that stuff. You got triple yeah. failovers. That. Well, okay. the The point is, like, I don't think it's because of negligence on the company's part. It's just it shit happens. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it because it's not as significant as it might seem. It's only like 10% of production for the quarter, which works out to about 3% for the year, which, okay, sure, that's a lot, but that's still only 3%. Um, and anyway, this kind of event just happens every so often. Like, it's about an annual thing that we have this kind of power outage. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah. Wait, so wait I, for supply and yeah. part supply I had is more in Abathan Creek than intended. You're, you're so, my good. short term memory is just shot. No, at start, guys. no, no. no. So, you're, you're going good. back to the original two articles. So, uh, talking or er, looking into uh, these uh, sources of where people are actually uh, getting suppliers saying that, yes, we will have better stock. I noticed a tweet from Harper Canucks where apparently they were actually like calling around to various uh, retailers and they're quoting like one and a half times more availability for the 3060 Ti or five times more availability for the 3060 Ti. Um, Chris, which, do I say it or do you want to say it? 1.5 times zero is still zero. Yeah, that's exactly oh, what I was yeah. going to say. It's like for the micro centers that got two GPUs, is 10 G big of a difference? Uh, yeah, it's a 400 percent increase. Dude. Look at Memory Express. It's the biggest brick and mortar and online e-tailer in Canada. They've got absolutely zero supply of yeah. the 1600 yep. series. Yeah, so so I feel like this is absolutely hilarious and it's bogus marketing. It's like, yes, if if you're if you have short supply, just be upfront about it. Honestly, <laughs> Nvidia right? has a thousand times more 3060 Ti's and 3090s in the pipeline. <laughs> So, a million <laughs> times more, a trillion times more Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> your, IQ isn't, your IQ nope. isn't high enough to enjoy brick and mortar stores. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Shut up, man. <laughs> well, I mean, the US isn't. They haven't got COVID under control, so they can go to brick and mortar stores. Uh, oh. Actually, we can. The deep <laughs> state can't stop me from going to Walmart. <laughs> nope. Chris hasn't seen season four of Brick and Mortar yet. I haven't, and I'm not sure I want to. Oh, yeah, boy. it's not really worth watching. I, no I, I didn't realize episodes. I didn't realize that it came out when it was live, so I couldn't like set my DVR to record it. And now it's going to take effort to find the episodes. And it's like season three was all right, and oh, the same. fandom has just kind of ruined it for me. It's season like, two was peak. Oh, same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, it, it, it's an Adult Swim show. And yeah, for the most part, Adult hmm. Swim does not put out good cartoons. Like I can, I, I can agree I, with that. Okay. Don't now, really... there's, there's there's cult hmm. followings, and rightfully yeah. so. But they're yeah, okay. But yeah. you don't have I'm to acknowledge them as quality pieces of content. Mouse quality, okay. <laughs> I mean, okay. Yeah, you know what? I'll give you I'm, that one. But the only I mean, I, I'm I'm trying to think like. <laughs> The only things that I could name uh, from Adult Swim that are actually like not just weird things that teenagers watch at 1 a.m. Uh, <laughs> the Boondocks gained some notoriety. Yes. And Rick and Morty became mainstream. And uh, I, I would say I couldn't really tell you anything else. Was Futurama well, I mean, was Adult Swim? There, but they were just it was at one, I thought it was at one point. I, well, I, I mean, it was, it was on like there, briefly. but they were just re it. They did reruns. Mm, mm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, My, same with like um, Kurt, Cow Cowardly Dog and Ren and Wait, no, no, Kurt. Like that. Kurt was, well, those uh, are just regular Cartoon, Cartoon Network, I think. Yeah, yeah I think they like showed up right on Adult Swim. Adult Swim. Okay, there we go. Futurama aired on Fox, and then after it got cancelled and they did the four little movies, it went over to Comedy Central, and then it just ended. Yep. So it got syndicated. Yep. I think Canada just gets all the stuff on weird channels because oh, everything's definitely. on completely different broadcast networks and weird contracts. Oh, yeah. Definitely. That's about right. So moving on to our next article. So this company that I'm actually not familiar Primax. with, uh, Primax. Does anybody know who Primax is? 
Pimax. Nope. <laughs> or Pimax, my bad. So is this Pimax, even a real company or is this just one of those I like, thought that they were gonna they were just fly by like night fly things by night. that comes up? I thought Shenzhen. that they were gonna headset they were just gonna be like a Chinese fly by night was gonna be good VR, away, you know, headset company no, that was gonna make like one it. thing, it was gonna be good and they were gonna go away. But yeah, no, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, yeah. I was in 2016. So mm-hmm. yeah. I mean four right. years in tech land, that's pretty yes. long. So the headquarters is Shanghai. Yeah, All right, that. there we go. Uh, okay. So it is so, a Chinese company. Yeah, um, I wasn't just saying that. <laughs> so this new Pimax 5K Super VR headset, uh, notable specs include uh, true 1440p per eye LCDs, uh, okay. up to a 180 uh, hertz refresh rate, mm-hmm. um, but also scaling down to 144, 120 hertz, and 90 hertz. And that's and about a 200 degree FOV, which is exciting for me of all people. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. Um, and unfortunately, that's all the information that we really have right now. Uh, it also I'm, supports Steam VR 1.0 and 2.0 lighthouse tracking, so you can nice. use Steam VR lighthouse tracking instead of having nice. to get own like their own custom manufacturer ones. That's, that's good. kind of a plus. That at least you have some sort of cross compatibility. Between so, VR headset, but actually, I, I went to the Pimax uh, shopping site, and what their package is, it's the the Super Five K, two index yeah. knuckle controllers, two Steam VR base stations, really and then yeah. the Display Port cable. So yeah. that's a really good so deal. It's literally they're, they're just selling the headset, and I like that. I mean, yeah, I think that's I think really need. neat. I think that's really neat that they're making something. I hesitate to say open, but like. It's good that it is an open enough um, thing that Valve has made that, like, yeah, there can be third party headsets if you want. Now, well, that's what VR needs. I mean, the only yeah. reason that PC simulation for game for cars and stuff has succeeded is because you can have a different pedal, a different shifter, a different wheel. Mm-hmm. They don't have to be the same brand. So, right. if they so, had to be, oh my God, it would have never took off. So, real quick, a couple of things that are really interesting to note with what uh, some of the features that they're adding to this. Um, swappable uh, comfort material so like either memory foam or leather or whatever else uh, that's just built into the device so you don't just have to buy another uh, modified index uh, basically face guard uh, they're adding a nose guard as well to deal with that uh, lighting uh, shining up yeah. through the nose hole <clears throat> issue that we have on the index I yeah. have that problem with my real nose yeah um and anything else interesting to note i mean honestly it seems like a pretty standard uh vr headset with the Mm -hmm. increased uh display spec and i'm all for it Mm -hmm. so i look forward to seeing people actually spend the 750 dollars on this thing to buy the headset and uh get some feedback because if this because this might be another step up in the market so yeah, that's all there's really to say about this. It's exciting. I wa- want to see somebody review it first. Well, yeah. the resolution's a bit lower than the index. Well, well, isn't the index uh just just above 4K between the two screens? Not 4K, no. Uh, I think it's uh, 2560 by 1600 each. Oh, then this is exactly eye. the same. Just slightly lower, but I mean, oh it's, no, 1440 instead of the 1600. Yeah. Yeah. If you're around 1440 at that point, I mean, I don't think you're really going to see that much of a quality difference mm-hmm. versus the frame rate. Yeah, and potentially mm-hmm. whatever's driving display connection wise, if you start having different color formats or something else. But I will say the the thing that I'm I'm a little concerned about is like so one of the nice features about the index is that weird uh, what they're calling the frunk. Uh, USB port. It's just that cut out in the mm-hmm. front of the headset where you can. Uh, it's just USB pass through. Yeah. What um, is that thing? Is that so, all it is? Yeah. It's just USB pass through. I I looked into it, and what some people are actually doing, Chris, is they're doing a modified uh, USB controller uh, breakout. So for people who are uh, using the um, the uh, the full body tracking, you need three separate dongles for that. So what they're doing is they're just mounting those three dongles onto the headset itself. Ah, uh, yes, I'm going to get a doctor to start my talk. Okay, uh. we're done. We're done. <laughs> um, also, another thing that I'm noticing, so this headset looks notably wider than the Index from well, just the initial renders. Perfect for you. <laughs> yeah, it, it's got the uh, 
the much higher FOV, which is actually, I think, more important at this point than resolution and frame. My biggest concern is how heavy it's going to be on the front, because the index is already very, very front heavy to begin with. Just do neck exercises and fix your posture and it'll be fine. My posture yes. is better than yours. I don't want to he hear your complaints. The <laughs> index sevens. is fine for me. I have yeah. no issues with it. it I don't have like issues either. Problem. Honestly, honestly, the only issue I have is just uh, my my uh, my eye socket sweating. <laughs> when I play also, yeah. Beat Saber song. Isn't that called think... crying? Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no. Like, like, uh, the the people who are complaining about uh, the index headset overheating and just getting really warm on the face, I only ever noticed that in Beat Saber because I'm actually doing physical activity while playing uh, VR. So yeah, I noticed uh, that in the summer because I have no air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that doesn't surprise me at all, dude. Global warming is gonna be so cool because like. Ha, 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 warming will be cool. It's going to be, like, kick-ass because the UK is just going to sink, and that's a good thing. Uh, but also, I'll have, beach pro I'll have a beachfront property. Yeah, but, and then but 10 also... 10 years later, you'll be Atlantis. Yeah, but also, um, because there's no air conditioning there, everybody's just going to be uncomfortable and even more miserable than they already are, but that's okay because they're British. <laughs> That was a really oh, long. I just realized Kim is British. Not 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 you, Kim. You're good. <laughs> he this probably can afford air conditioning. Kim is the good oh, one. Yeah, good point. He's Kim one is of one of the, the good, good ones. ones. Oh boy. Nice. All right. Yeah. Uh, now moving on. Sapphire reveals new AMD Ryzen embedded V2000 processor motherboard series in the four by four and five by five form factor. Huh. Does anybody care about this? Chris. Wait, hang on. Say all that over again. I wasn't listening. <laughs> Just click the next link in the document. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the short and sweet is we're now finally yes. seeing well, stupid phone. Simmons is short uh, and sweet. We're now yeah. finally seeing that more manufacturers are getting on board now with these smaller form factors for the public. It's, it's a NUC for like AMD systems. It's not literally a NUC, but it's the same form factor. You no, know, but the nice thing is like before ASRock was really the only one, but now we've got Gigabytes released a lot more Gigabyte, now to the public. Gigabyte had the bricks for a while though. It just didn't sell very well because their only, their only niche was AMD and because AMD APUs at the time sucked donkey dick uh, they just overheated like at idle, basically. They would just overheat and um, they weren't good. So Gigabyte was just left with the Intel versions, but the basic Intel NUC was better anyway. So there was no reason to get it. But now that like AMD is back and has good APUs, um, you can actually get like decent, uh, excuse me, uh, you can get decent, uh, whatchamacallits. Um, it's play out. No, processors, systems, uh, uh, right. using like AMD now in this form factor. Yeah, so before, so, I mean, yeah, before we had limited availability of the motherboards for public purchase, you had to buy a brick or a NUC, which I could see Intel needing to be in a NUC form factor because they don't want to sell just the boards. They want to get the full, they used to. a full system. Yeah. They used to sell just the boards, but they don't really do that anymore. Yeah. yeah, and then, like I said, the AMD ones were pretty shit in the early days, but now we're starting to see a lot more vendors making just the motherboards so you can now use to make your own DIY systems or replace an old NES or something with now a nice, super powerful gaming PC in a box. And with more, these 4x4, what they're calling, I guess, what was it? The mini... No, the 4x4 form fact doesn't really have an official... Uh, okay. So five yeah. by five spec is the, the NUC, uh, mini STX. The NUC is the de facto form factor. The mini STX is its own thing. Yeah, so it's technically more of those. Uh, an ATX variant, but it sucks and is stupid. <laughs> but I mean, it works for embedded. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, no. Okay. Let me finish this bite because graham crackers dry my mouth out yeah. a bit, and also uh, <laughs> yeah, just I had wash too it down with some more uh, an Naboth Creek. Mm -hmm. So, um, the long story short is Mini STX is a stupid form factor. What Mini yeah. STX is, 
is it's a little bit smaller than many ITX. But you lose out on the PCI Express slot and you have to use SODIMs rather than regular DIMs. Now, a smaller system would be something like a NUC, which is significant, which is like proportionally, I think it's about uh, the same the same size difference. Uh, what is it? Five divided by 6.7 versus four divided by five. It's a slightly smaller decrease in size proportionally, but it's it's not insubstantial. And if you're going from ITX to NUC, then it's actually massive. But anyway, the point is, what Mini STX gives you is a CPU socket. That's it. But this isn't really the kind of system that you're going to be upgrading on the on a whim because like people who would upgrade their systems like this would also benefit from a PCI Express slot and therefore they should just have like ITX available from them. And ASRock has their like kind of pseudo standard 5 by 7 inch mini STX variant that comes with like an MXM slot. But that's not standard, and MXM cards are hard to come by. So it, it's just in this weird limbo between the NUC form factor and Mini ITX, and there's not really that much use for it. I don't well, think so, anyway. Depending on what the board starts to support for IO wise, you can look at either Thunderbolt 3 or 4 for external GPUs or using the M.2 slot, one of them on there. But you get that for either out. system, because let's be honest, the advantage of a NUC is that it's small, but there's nothing preventing you from sticking it in a larger custom case, approximately the same size, let's be honest, as Mini STX. Mini STX, though, you could fit a little bit more internal I.O. onto it, either more M.2 slots or more SATA or more of those sure, PCI I Express guess. 8X I mean, slots. But, but at that point, I want to refer back to our article from last week about the uh, the ASRock rack motherboard. It was like, at yeah, that point, if you need... If oh, you... yeah, where it has like those um, uh, SFF family connectors where it's like a yep. PCI Express by 8 lane and it's, a, it's a link slightly and a, extended uh, like mini port. ITX motherboard extended in the wrong direction uh, only <laughs> to be able to, to support quad channel full factor uh, DDR4 sticks and, well, and the massive you get epic a, slot. <laughs> well, regardless of that, but um, but then you've got your full PCI X16 slot, and then you have your seven um SFF slots to get your full PCI bandwidth, but not even. And if you're really concerned about that kind of expansion, then I would say go for something like that. But I mean, at the same time, uh, I mean, I, I can see where these kind of embedded systems come into play. You say you need expansion and no power. But uh, Simmons, that's the thing, because if you're dealing with an embedded system, you're not going to want that socket. Hell, you might not even want the sodium. It's just an embedded system. You deploy it and you leave it. Well, so that's a, the that's a thing that I'm finding interesting about some of these renders here, though. It's like, it's like I'm seeing a couple different, it looks like a couple different styles of motherboard here. Well, one of them two. is STX. One of them is The X first three SDX. are the STX. The last two are the... The 4x4. Um, oh, the four hang four. on. That's STX with a soldered CPU, so you don't even get the advantage of a socket. So you're looking at, like, two M2 slots and two SODIMM slots. Yep. You're looking at, like, actually, that's four display outputs. Uh, plus dual network. Whereas once you go to the NUC, that's half the display outputs, half the network. Okay, sure, fine. But no. you still have two SODIMM slots. No, do you, do you know what that motherboard th right there is intended for, Chris? That is intended for people who are doing like pseudo thin clients uh, no. in a work environment. No, it is actually intended for digital signage. That, that's like... Yeah. That is a big, big market for uh, embedded motherboards to the I point that there are like there are multiple machines. graphics. Yeah, there are multiple you, graphics cards companies out there that like they no, do not they, make their own ASICs. They just like buy them off of uh, usually AMD, sometimes Matrox. Nvidia. Yeah, Matrox, Matrox is one of them. There, there's a different one. I'd have to look up the brand name, but their shtick is that they have built-in like HDMI over Cat six uh, adapters on their graphics cards. No, so here, here's 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 my point, because unfortunately, with my work, they don't really invest in a good system for doing your job. They just invest in a system that has enough display outputs to satisfy uh, uh, essentially boomers at this point. Old uh, people. So, yeah. So so basically, you take one of these five, five, five motherboards, you slap in about 16 gigs of RAM at max. 
uh, one single drive, everything else is networked, and then you have your split networking for your, say, Oob network or your production network, and then you have four display outs, and everything else is just stored on a remote server. That would be perfect yeah, for control my rooms. work environment with a good regard to the end user's actual performance. Yeah, a base amount box that could run four displays for like a mind control center or like a, a utilities control center where they have a bunch of screens for yep. monitoring stuff, but only a couple keyboard mice combinations for those. I was going to say, looking at my job, 90% of my work is done in a VDI type solution. So, yeah. So, I mean, the processing's not even done on my box. Simmons, you should do crimes next time you're at work. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, even these boxes, like, you wouldn't even need storage on board. You could technically just network boot these things well, so, in a remote so no, location and you're good well so so the, uh, the way that I would see this happening is that you have like a, like a 128 gig SD card as your boot drive and then it just connects guys to the he thinks he's a people he's wearing clothes are you posting this in the wrong chat I'm posting it in voice lobby thank you very oh, much it, oh yeah. it's just not scrolling down yeah you get in the right, in the right chat Okay. Uh, yeah, no, Simmons, please do not use SD cards to boot off of. They are not very good. And I'm, cheap, I'm not I'm not justifying cheap, cheap I'm not just single package just, NVMe solutions exist and you should be using those because they are good. No, but Chris, I can't boot my Raspberry Pi from a Chris, NVMe drive. You, well, maybe you, you should get a better computer. Exifer, no, no. <laughs> if your name were if you were a furry, you would be called Exifer okay, and you'd Chris, pet me. Let me speak for a moment. All no. I'm going to say is. I'm not justifying this as an end user. I'm justifying it as for some, like some OEM like HP or Dell who could sell uh, one of these well, things. Well, that's for... still not justifiable. That's no, no, illegal. Li no, listen. No, HP or Dell basically putting this thing in a pretty little package and then selling these things for fifteen hundred dollars with a warranty and just dumping like hundreds of these things. Fifteen hundred dollars, and you're only giving me an EMMC card to boot off of. Are you kidding me, sir? Yeah, you well, that's a terrible HP. value. Have you ever seen the prices of uh, these big box OEM uh, just shit box uh, workstations that they sell to companies for thousands of dollars? Uh, and all they are is like a Core i3 with eight gigs of RAM. Well, it better come with something at least SATA. Yeah, that's you're, it. You're not. You're give, you get not a, giving you, me you, a goddamn SD card. Come on, you, you come get, on, come you, the heck you on. Get, you get a SATA 250 gig spinning bus drive usually. <laughs> it's, an SD card would probably beat. Yeah, the yes. SD card would probably be preferable, but still. So, uh, so, so, no, no, no. Like, I could absolutely see these things like being used for the the evil OEM uh, big box company, just because why not? Or it just does factory the machines job. in general. Looking yeah. like CNC machines and 3D printers and mills. They just yeah. need a x86 PC to run their own OS off of. Yep. And yeah. this would fit nicely in one of those boxes and they low power. You don't even need a big heat sink on it. Yeah. But if all you need is just a very basic PC, hell, you could go smaller than a knock. Like you could go credit card size. There is nothing. I what is it? Is it the uh, the Latte Panda that did like the Raspberry Pi by yeah, X eighty six meme? I tried those. I tried one. It was oh yeah, no, they're yeah. awful because they've got like Core M's or uh, outdated Atoms, but still, yeah, like the like this. <laughs> the weird thing about when you get like the CNCs and stuff like that is you don't need a lot of power. But right. the issue is you need a high enough baseline of power for latency for running the commands consistently. Yep. Uh, that, that's yeah. what these are going to provide is it's yeah it's not a core series it's like, like a Celeron or like the Surface the Surface Go with its weird Atom Gold processor <laughs> yeah it's fine for web browsing but if you need that minimum baseline for let's say audio production um you actually, don't need actually an I you're thinking you're thinking of Pentium Silver Pentium Gold is the core Pentium Pentium Silver is the Atom Pentium. <laughs> That's how I realize I I'm being that. obnoxious, I but I had Nobathan Creek. And, no, no, uh, on, I'm on, on, honestly, that that kind of obnoxious uh, discussion in regards to this kind of context makes is perfectly justified. Oh yeah, that's right. That's because this is for entertainment. Well, no, well, like, no, these, no. These boards. No, what I'm saying is, you should be getting angry at these companies who are just selling shit boxes uh, on the mass scale because. Uh, yeah. Dumb if they're, if they're don't offering know the buying. support to go with it, like if they're giving you a kick-ass support 
contract, then all right. So that's the thing I'll is like it, but they usually aren't, are they? We have our Dell PCs that work that we are switched over to mostly laptops now, but I still have my Q6600 based Dell Optiplex that's from 2013. Yep. That still works perfectly fine with its white label Dell power supply internally. Yeah, it's not the fastest. Yeah, it's overpriced for what you're getting performance wise. But I've never no. really seen any of those machines fail aside from the graphics card or the drives, so, which are so kind of out of the control of Dell HP. Yeah, me, me and a couple of buddies at work. Uh, this was the, the computer uh, building crowd at my last job. Uh, but they uh, uh, we, we had regular discussions of, oh, my God, McAfee is just bogging down our hard drive. Do you know what would be the easiest solution? Just slap in an SSD so it can just be done with this scan really quickly and move on. Uh McAfee is in jail. Actually, better yet, why don't we just build our own computer and then have so-and-so image it for us? And let's see how cheap we can go and still have a better performing system. And we basically came to the conclusion was if you slap in 120 gig SSD, because that's all you really need for Windows and then a remote uh, drive, Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, get a... One of those G fifty five twenties because that, that that was about the time uh, scale we were looking at. Uh, it was going to be a much faster system for about three hundred fifty bucks versus probably the one thousand dollar system that we had sitting at our desk. Yeah, you could just buy like two, so in case it fails, you've got two hot spares. <laughs> oh, my yeah. work still. Like, no, we we speaks. buy all of our. Okay, go ahead, Chris. Uh, just speaking of SSD sizes, so back in the day. Uh, like when I was first getting into computers, 60 gig SSDs, 60, 64 gig SSDs, uh, they sucked, obviously. They were like right. one or two channels. They were very slow. They were usually Sandforce as well, if not like J Micron or something. They, they were garbage. But they only ever dropped down to about 50 to 60 bucks. Uh, there were like a couple of 32 gig drives out there for 40 bucks, but they never got lower than that. And actually, one of the things that I've really liked lately is that. 120 gig SSDs have not disappeared. There's now just like a 15 or $20 tier for honest to God SATA SSDs. And it's, it's just lit aff. Like you can stick one of these in any old PC and boot off it. Oh yeah. I just buy like Best Buy. I keep going there just buy the 250 gig West digital blue SATA two and a half inch SSDs because they're perfect yeah. upgrades for anyone with laptop or a basic system. Yep. Yeah, and, and if, you're, work, if you don't need the space, it's great. Yeah, like like our two, work, all we do for our systems fine. is we order the Dell. I have a the precision line. So like Core i7 8850Hs and like Quadro cards and all that stuff. But they just get the regular 250 gig spinning option instead of paying Dell $600 for an SSD upgrade. Yeah. And then just buy one terabyte Crucial MX 500s for $300 bulk. And just upgrade them because they have to re-image them anyway with our work image with the VPN and all that. And yep. boom, everyone's got a one terabyte SSD across the company. Yeah. And like they got all these spinning drives that they just stick in our NASes at work for all of our <laughs> just yeah. basically our cold backups. Yeah. No, I mean like that, that's one of the cool things about like just getting hard disks now. I'm looking at a PC part picker. There are nine hundred twenty gig S or sorry, there are eight hundred twenty gig SSDs below twenty bucks. Uh, there is crazy. one 60 gig SSD, which is two dollars more expensive than the 120 <laughs> gig version in the same lineup. Amazing. I do not know why this exists, but OK, sure, whatever. It's probably just old um, stock that is hasn't been taken off the listing yet. Oh, my God, that's right. And then a lot of the times, if you look a little bit further for about 25 to 30 bucks, you can get a 240 gig drive. Yep. It, like, no, like the, this is I, I, I genuinely love this. Like, we're just in an era of cheap storage. I've actually kind of, like, toyed in my head with the idea of, like, could I contact, like, some computer recycler in town or something, hook me up with some old systems that are still going to be reasonably supported by Windows for the next few years, and just, like, do, do like, a charity project, dump maybe, like, 50 bucks worth of parts in them, and you suddenly have a computer that's, like, 10 times faster than it would have been back in the day just because it has an SSD and enough RAM. Yep. 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 I bought an SSD recently to put in a PS3. Yeah, the PS3 you did. cannot use all of it because it's SATA 2. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I, it, it doesn't matter because that's just sequentials anyway. Like, that reminds as, me of the Xbox 360s where at one point you could no longer buy the Western Digital Scorp- Scorpio two and a half inch drives. Mm-hmm. That were the 320 gigs. You had to buy the 600 gig ones and flash the firmware for the 320 gig. Oh my god, are you it. serious? It couldn't so take be recognized. that were too big. <laughs> no, it needed the specific firmware. They had X- the 360 firmware locked to drives that only had the right firmware on them. So you had oh, to put the 320 gig firmware onto the 600. I think at some point it probably did, but this was for that expansion module you slide in the top. Yeah. So you could easily transfer games and media because that was, yeah. they were still 100 megabit. They weren't gigabit yet, but they could technically yeah. do 1080p. This yeah. back when 1080i versus 1080p was still a thing with AVX. Back, yeah. back in the time frame where that cool friend was the one that had three of those 60 gig expansion modules. Yeah. and they were Back when badass. every movie was <laughs> 750 megabytes so it would fit on a CD because no one could afford <laughs> DVD writers. Yep. Yeah. yeah. This is actually uh, where the PS3 beat the, uh, the 360 is you could just throw any old drive in as long as it's 2.5 inch and SATA. Yep. Yep. And external, couldn't they? I, I'm not sure if you could do external. But it was so easy to pop that thing out that it didn't matter. 360 lets you use only any old uh, USB storage device, as far as I know. I think that was only for transfer, though, not for game storage. Uh, You could store DLC on it, I know that much. Yeah, you could. Okay. But not games. Yeah. Because we got uh, we got like the 360 arcade edition. I guess oh, it was yes. Christmas 2007. It's like the 20 gig model or something. Yeah, 20 gig hard drive <laughs> came with the uh, the old Blade interface. We got uh, came preloaded with Hexic HD, which is a good game that I kind of want to play now. Um, I, I've been meaning to uh, take one of my uh, my 120 gig and lend SSDs and just drop it in there, but I'm. I'm not convinced it'll be trivial just because console and there's going to be stupid firmware lockouts probably. Yeah. Very right. annoying. So, so we're going to, I'm going to need Axie to help me with this article because this is actually from last week. And if he were a furry, he would be called Axie. No, wait, no, wait. We did talk about this one and we all got really angry at it. So we're not going to talk about it. What? The mobile GPUs? Yeah. I don't because remember that at all. all. All it was, it was a non-article about, hey, let's get splash on a bunch of charts and specs from the mainstream GPUs, and then yeah. also talk about the mobile GPUs. So yeah, there's we're not more, talking about that. There's more talking about just how AMD's finally got a big enough foothold that laptop manufacturers are actually making yeah. laptops well, I mean, that can support yeah. AMD that, plus that, a that was kind of the That was end. kind of the thing, right? Because like Zen 1 was, Zen was, Zen was a beta build. Like not yeah. literally, it was polished enough to be a retail product, but like that that was a proof of concept. This is where AMD can go. Because if I remember correctly, in the server space, Naples wasn't the one that took off, it was Rome. Naples yeah. got sold as like basically a dev kit or like a demo system for a lot of IT departments. Like, okay, this this is what this thing can do. And well, then Naples Rome was comes out to... and we're we're willing to dump money into this now. Well, Naples went to like data centers like Linode and DigitalOcean and those, yeah. those content delivery networks, such so as VPS providers, Minecraft servers, game servers, stuff like that, as a cheap, lots of cores. And that's also when Microsoft and a lot of VM makers changed all their licensing to be more per thread instead of per core or per Numa node, which fucked over a lot of servers and how expensive they got just for licensing costs with Epic. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, moving on to this next article. So I wanted to include this because this was just a a, a law what kind of article. Uh, yeah. So on November seventeenth, this article came out by CNBC. Apparently, the NFL will hold a virtual Pro Bowl this year with the actual players competing in huh. Madden twenty twenty one. <laughs> okay, see, th- this is something that I don't understand because the NFL has just been doing in-person games already, so, like, I-, I don't... Last month, the NFL announced it would cancel the 2021 Pro Bowl game because of COVID. Well, why? They're already doing the regular season. They've been doing the regular season. Yeah, They've been doing a reg- the regular season to the point that, like, the Ravens had to make up a game, what was it, like, six days later? 
Like they, they had to make it up on a Wednesday afternoon, which is a <laughs> new time slot for football. Um, yeah, the, this. Uh, oh, OK, it, sure. Honestly, OK, so 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 the only thing I see this actually being used for is an excuse for them to be able to stream this on Twitch. And I look forward to them actually following through with this so we can just watch. Uh, I mean, football it's players be really so garbage whatever. at video games. It, yeah, it's the Pro gonna... Bowl. It's whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was just gonna... I, I guess the problem is Madden is a two player game. So. Well, no, unless they do online play and then you can control individual players. Oh, you can. Ew. Yeah. Gross. All right. Well, See, anyway. what, what I can't wait for is for sports in general to get to a point with motion track technology and games being realistic enough. That you could have basically start of a season, every player gets like a full 3D scan of themselves that mm-hmm. gets uploaded to your season pass of Madden. And <laughs> all the players wear full electronic tracking suits under their uniforms when they're playing on the field live. But then anyone who has the game at home, they can just turn their game on, open that match with their VR headset, whatever, and basically go to any point on the field they want to and watch the game from any angle they want to and zoom in and follow a player yeah. and look at like the player yeah, from all, their all of, all first of person view. All of that will be powered view. by Intel. Yeah. Yeah. See, See, that really cool. All of that will be powered Axie, by Intel. Axie, yeah. Axie, that would be really cool, but what if somebody had a gun and they I'm shot Tom in. Brady? <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving that in. <laughs> oh, I don't think that's how VR works, Chris. Tom Brady mouth kisses <laughs> yeah. his son. There's video evidence. Yeah. I don't know. This, I, is, this isn't slander. You can leave it in, Jack. Jack, Jack yeah. I think I think you might need to just bleep out that one sentence just no. for our own safety. Uh, first of all, I said song that, over Chris. Okay, first of all, Simmons, I said that it would be cool. I also think that like the JFK assassination was pretty lit, fam. His blood would turn cool. That's okay, sure. that's actually getting cut. Who can, the CIA did it, Simmons. It's fine. Shut up, Chris. It, it was Quebec. So, uh, yeah, Quebec was behind it. Lee Harvey was a lot of us from I have a dog I have, sled caravan from Quebec. I have an important question. What's a Pro Bowl? Uh, it's just like an all-star game. Um, I will say, though, just on a serious note, that like as far as esports replacing regular sports goes, the only one that really worked out was um, NASCAR using, was it iRacing? It was yeah. iRacing. You got to hear what the drivers yeah. usually say, and some of them got banned for saying it. Yep. Some yeah. of them used racial slurs <laughs> oh, to do or, a mic check. Or, or I still think my favorite article that I know we talked about several months ago was the the one dude who is put, taking part in that F1 tournament and uh, he uninstalled the game live on stream. <laughs> oh yeah, Lando yeah. Norris. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, this game's shit and then uninstalled it while while still streaming. I like, yeah, that, I like that the, was an uh... official uh, F1 race as well. He just said, no, this is terrible. Uninstalled it and started playing uh, I think it was Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then after, after an race, official uh, F one race, on yeah, yeah, and then after well, after the race, he uh, got conscripted into the army, and now he has to kill real people. Uh, first of all, that was like uh, <laughs> Pat Tillman. Second of all, <laughs> well, no, so so wait, wasn't the reason why Lando basically rage quit was just because of server connection issues? Yeah, server connection issues. The game was running terribly, which is just normal uh, for normal. an F one game. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, he kept disconnecting, the game kept crashing, and he just uninstalled it and started playing Call of Duty in the middle of an official race. Absolutely amazing. Oh, and then what's this next uh, article we got about mercenaries? Oh, it's about Cyberpunk. All I'm going to say about yeah. this is that Cyberpunk isn't going to be a good game. Yeah. They should delay it again just because it will make <laughs> just gamers to make angry. gamers angry. Agreed. <laughs> No, so I've got this group chat uh, with a couple of my uh, my military buddies, and uh, basically they you guys uh, call we've got two of them who the are unit? really looking forward to playing this game. Do you guys just, call I, yourselves the unit? No. Damn. Do you guys get like really tactical in voice chat? No, <laughs> nice. we don't. We, we we just call each other a bunch Sounds of pussies. Like a real and it's funny. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Sounds like a real game. I'm just like in the showers. Yeah, basically. A doctor too. So, anyway. so no, no. So we've got these two guys who are really, really looking forward to Cyberpunk 2077 to come out, and um, 
we've got this one guy who just all uh, like once a week has been posting just that one Photoshop screenshot of that uh, twenty uh, that Cyberpunk delay announcement, but it's just got uh, "Never Going to Give You Up" uh, lyrics written in the uh, for the text for the announcement. Yeah, I'm yeah. a lot of people. Upset. Every single time that this this has been happening for about three weeks, and every time a single time this gets posted in the chat. Uh, those two guys are just going back and forth. It's like, damn it, this game keeps getting delayed. I'm getting sick and tired of this. It's like, guys, can, can you please read? I can't read, and I'm seeing the, the fucking yeah, you can't roll. read. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's like the dumbest. It's the dumbest thing. And uh, yeah, when this game eventually comes out, I, I feel like people are just going to forget about it. <laughs> Actually, speaking of not being able to read and brick rolls, so kind of kind of tangential, but like. You know the Navy SEAL copy pasta? Yes. There is something about it that is universal. If you translate it into any language and you just look at the text, you can kind of figure out what it hmm. is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. I'm going to try that. <laughs> like, maybe not like, you know, languages that use a totally different character set, but at least, you know, Latin I want to see it translated. Yeah, I want to see it translated to Russian. Uh, OK, hang on. Navy seal. But pasta. I need somebody who can actually speak the language to see if they can actually make out what it's saying. Sucky blat. <laughs> just do the just do the typical like Russian to French to Spanish to English and see how it how well it keeps. Uh, there, there's just made a Rus Russian substitution to keep the concept of the guerrilla warfare bit <laughs> good. Amazing. Oh, this is stupid. I'm going to okay. do a screenshot of my whole computer screen okay. just yeah. to show you how stupid this is. Okay, yeah, let's see it. Fortnite needs sex from r slash copy pasta. <laughs> wait, wait, why are you using the mobile version of Google Translate? I'm not. Oh, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. All what? right. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, nope, yeah, that, that's a copy yeah. pasta. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, so, oh, uh, so just a bunch of line breaks. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I no, can't read that. No, no, no. It's basically his scaling is like Google just smashed against the left hand side of the screen with no actual scaling. Um, yeah, I was going to say before we wrap up, does anybody hey, want to just uh, throw out randomness? Uh, Simmons is a fascist and doesn't let me say regrettable things. It's because that is I, the I definition care for you. of fascism. It's because yeah. I care for you, buddy. Why? Yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's funny. You get angry and I get enjoyment out of seeing you suffer. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, daddy. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I think that's all we've got for this week. Um, oh, what so about the chickens? Uh, no, we already talked about that article a couple months ago, remember? Oh, I thought we were saving it for a later time. Okay. No, 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 no. If you look, we actually lined through it. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Having sex with chickens. That was an article that happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, someone fixed the uh, the translation for Somali on Google Image, on uh, Google Translate. It's no longer racist. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Latte right. Panda emulation. Oh my god. I'm going to read Latte Panda articles and get uh, annoyed in the after show. Um, I want more crackers because I am still slightly inebriated. What kind of because, crackers do I want? Barrel. Uh, yeah. Barrel. Uh, god, dude. I really wish, but the deep state won't let me. Um, no, like, sh should I get yeah. Cheez Its? I think yeah, we I might have white cheddar Cheez Its. Yeah, yeah, go get cheese. It's We've also got jalapeno nice. lays, but I'm white, so I need to drink them with milk. Nice. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> what? The spice hurts me, Simmons. Yeah, I wish you weren't so white sometimes. God, same. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this episode of the Extreme Hardware Podcast. Uh, we might do a extras recording after this, but if not, we'll see you next time. Yeah. Uh, bye bye. Bye. -bye.